In this episode of Build or Buy, I'm going to be taking this pile of timber and turning it into a pergola. But is it better to actually build or is it better to just buy one? We'll have a look at the pricing options a bit later on, but for now, let's get the pergola built. So let's have a look at some of the timber that I've got. All the timber I'm using is treated, so it's going to last up to the elements. For the front post to the pergola, I've got three metre long by 100 mil by 100 mil square post. That's roughly four inch by four inch in old money and about 10 foot long. For the ridges to the pergola, I've got 150 mil by 50 mil wide boards. Those are also three meters long in old money. It's about six inch by two inch, again, by about 10 foot. And then for one batten that's gonna go against the house, I've just got a four by two. That's roughly 100 mil by 50 mil. And that's 2.4 meters long. It's about eight foot in old money. To attach the batten to the wall, I'm gonna be using coach screws. I'm just gonna use three in this board. For this application, it's gonna be plenty strong enough. To help me a little bit, I'm going to first drill three holes into the wood. I can then offer it up to the wall and put a mark where I need to drill the wall and add some wall plugs. Now that I've got the holes drilled in the wood, I can drill the holes into the wall. I'm just going to do one first, get that attached, check that it's level, and then I can put the rest in place. Now I can add a wall plug. Then a coach bolt will be able to go through the wood and into that wall plug. I don't want to fully tighten it yet because I'll be able to lift the other end and make sure it's level and then we can drill the other two holes into the wall. So now I've got it secured on the one side really loosely. I'll be able to lift this up, make sure that it's nice and level and then use a drill bit that I'm not really bothered about to drill through and make a mark on the brickwork. Then I know where I need to drill to put the other two wall plugs. So now that I can see that that's level, I can use the drill to mark the wall. Don't you just hate it when you do a job like this and it reveals that your house ain't level? Well, at least the pergola will be. The batten's in place now, but it will be coming down later. For the time being, I'm gonna leave it where it is because the next job is to get the stump synced in. Now I can make sure it's all square to the wall. Then I can clamp on a couple of scrap battens, hold it all nice and steady, and then get the pulse mix put in. So I've got both posts in there. Let's see where we need to cut them off to. So now I've got a post roughly in place. I'll be able to put a spirit level on top, make sure it's level, and then mark underneath on the post so I know where to cut to. Right, so it stopped raining a little bit now. When it was tipping it down, I managed to get the other ridge applied on this side, got it levelled and marked off where to cut. I'm just going to cut it off with an hand saw now. There is faster ways of doing it. You could use a powered saw. It could have been cut before it was put in place. But to be honest, I think it's a lot easier this way. I could always make sure that this is nice and level. I don't have to worry too much about the depth compared to the height because it's easier to just cut it off later. That's that done. Now that I've got both posts cut off level, I can cut away a notch. So I'm gonna cut away half of the post by how deep the rails are gonna be. That way this piece will be removed and the rail will sit nicely on a bit of a ledge. It'll make it a lot stronger and then I can just add a couple of screws to stop it from moving around on me. So this little notch that I've cut out here is gonna support the horizontal beam and that beam will support the ridges as well. So it's well worth cutting out a notch. It's gonna add a lot more strength. With this horizontal beam in place now, I'm gonna add just one screw to help hold it in place. The weather is absolutely tipping it down. So I've had to put the gazebo up, but all I've literally got to do now is just notch out the ridges. These will add a lot more strength to the structure and it's well worth the extra few minutes it's gonna take. This notch at the back will be removed and it's what will rest on the batten that's on the wall.
this notch that I'm taking out to the front of the board or slot into the horizontal piece we've got spanning between the two posts. Then the last thing we're going to cut is a bit of a decorative curve at the front. Now I can do the same to all of the other ridges. The next piece that needs notching out is the batten that was on the wall. I got this tucked down in the pouring rain. I'm absolutely soaked, but we'll get these notched out and then the ridges can easily slot into these. It adds a lot more strength. I'll be able to add a screw through the top as well, just to stop things sliding about. So I've gone ahead and cut the notches on the horizontal piece as well. This is the piece that goes between the two upright posts. So I can get this put back in place now and then we can get the pergola assembled. So that's how to make a pergola, but first, how much would it have cost to buy a ready-made kit? Well, one of the cheapest ones I was able to find measures 2.2 metres by 1.7 metres, and it was £190, and that was made from bamboo. Not ideal. I then had a look at some pergolas that match the dimensions of the one that I built, and they came in at £450. So how much did the one that I built cost? Well, I paid £182.77 for the wood, and I paid £10 for two bags of the cement post mix. Now do keep in mind, these wood prices at the moment are pretty inflated. Trying to get timber to the UK with everything going on in the world, it's been kind of awkward, so the prices have skyrocketed. So I'll give it a few months and this price is bound to drop. I think that makes it pretty clear that building a pergola is way better than just buying a ready-made kit, especially when you consider if you did buy a kit, you've still got to put it together yourself anyway. So that's the pergola done. I really hope that in this video I've been able to show you that building your own pergola is simpler than you probably thought it was and it can work out a lot cheaper too. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and you're going to give this a go for yourself because if you am please let us know in the comments down below. We love to hear your thoughts on these projects. If you haven't subscribed to On A Budget already make sure you click the subscribe button and then click the little bell icon next to it that way you'll get a notification as soon as you upload a new video. Thank you all for watching.